welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the big concerns that farmers across the country have in their fields is compaction. We'll talk about what's the best way to address compaction issues in your fields. All fall we've been talking about nutrients and soil testing. Well today we're going to focus on a nutrient you might not have thought a lot about, but it's incredibly important for several aspects of every crop you raise. It's copper. We'll talk about it later in the show. We have a very difficult to control weed of the week that we'll talk about, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about a commonly asked question from non-farmers. It's, why do farmers leave some corn rows standing in their fields each winter? Well, it doesn't make any sense, does it? You look at corn fields and you think, well, they're going to harvest everything. This is how farmers make money, is they take the corn out of the field and they sell it and, and that's it. But here's a few rows and it doesn't really make sense. Why are some rows taken, why are not? Well, here's the reason why. We want to stop snow. And you say, what? What are you talking about? It's a snow fence. That's what it is. Now, some farmers may say, you know what? I don't really care about the snow. I care about the wildlife in fields. And that may confuse you as well. But many farmers, they're very, very concerned about what happens in nature, what happens for the wildlife. They want to leave a little food out there for the deer and the pheasants and other animals that are out in the field. That's part of the case. But I think the big thing is the snow brain, because in many areas of the country, it's dry. They want to catch all the snow in the field or all the moisture in the field well, they can keep. Yeah, it, it's not even that so much though. It's more about protecting the roads. So for farmers, obviously most farmers live in the country. They live on gravel roads. There's not a lot of snow plows running around or anything. I know for ourselves even, we have basically our own snow plows so we can get out in the middle of the winter time. We're the ones who are cleaning the roads and it's usually one, two, three days later when the township might come around and plow the snow away. Well, we're already done. It's already clean. But here's the whole thing. In a lot of these areas where it's flat, there's nothing to stop that snow. Then all of a sudden that snow is blowing across the field and then there's that little dip for the ditch. And where that dip is, then all of a sudden there will a lot of times be snow that catches right there and then snow piles up in certain areas of roads. Well, obviously we don't want that as farmers because we're the ones who have to go clean that snow off. So then as farmers, we will strategically place where we leave some corn rows. And a lot of times this is just trial and error over many years. So instead of spending money to buy a snow fence, we leave that corn out there as a snow fence that catches the snow, that prevents the snow from building up on the road and just saves a lot of work over the course of the winter time. Then when spring comes, we'll go out there and we'll harvest those rows just like it was fall. And yes, there will be some difference because like Darren said, there will be wildlife that feeds on it. There will be some ears that drop off between fall and spring. But grand total, you run the numbers on a little bit of snow fence, it might cost $50. Well, just to plow the road one more time costs a lot more than $50. So a lot of farmers figured that's a pretty good trade-off. Well, and farmers will use some other strategies that go hand in hand with this. They may also either mow the grass very short in the ditches, or they may burn the grass out of the ditches in the fall. They haven't killed the grass. It'll come back in the spring. But by taking all that top growth off, there's just nothing there in the ditch to hold snow back. So the snow can blow across the road and hopefully get caught up in their rows of corn that they left out in the field. So there's a couple strategies with that snow removal, but I, I get back to this too, Brian, and I say, you know what? Okay, that is a win for everybody in the area if we can keep those roads clean in the winter, but it's also a win for that farmer if he can keep some more moisture in the field. And a lot of times you'll see it on the yield monitor right where that snow fence was an extra moisture was held in the field. If we have a dry year, there will be higher yields through that spot. So it could be real beneficial. Now, the other can be true too, is if you have excess moisture and you say, man, I, I couldn't get in that part of the field to plant and I planted the rest of the field, okay. Every once in a while that might happen. For the most part, it's a positive for the farmer. And yeah, it costs a little bit of money to keep that road clean, but there's a lot of farmers across the country that are gonna do this. You're gonna see those corn rows left in many fields this winter. Well, one thing you hopefully won't see in many fields this winter is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show. 
Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leader's IntelliSlope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioAg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship. Just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Vail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. A Vail, hold your ground. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. How should you manage compaction issues on your farm? Well, the first thing is easy. Don't create compaction, but we don't live in that ideal world where we farm with hovercrafts. We, we have to drive tractors and combines out in the field. We just have to, in order to get the job done. So whenever you're doing that, you're going to create some compaction. You know, the big things would be to avoid it to begin with is reducing tillage, building organic matter, uh, and then not being out in the fields when it's too wet. I mean, those are they're kind of the obvious things. And then managing the air pressure in your tires, using tracks, those kind of things. All right, that all aside, hey, the, the job has been done. Harvest is over. Now we've got some compaction spots out in fields. What do we do to solve those issues? The first thing you've got to do before you start addressing the compaction or anything else is do some good soil testing. And the reason why I bring this up is we run into guys all the time where you literally walk into the field and everything is hard. Not just where they drove, but the whole field is hard. It's all compacted. A lot of times the reason why is because they just don't have enough calcium overall in the soil. So they're using products like gypsum and lime to basically help loosen that soil up. So we want to find out right away, are you in good shape? Do you have enough calcium? Do you have enough sulfur in your soil? Are there enough of the big nutrients so you can get good porosity in your soil and you reduce compaction long term? The other thing is before we are going to talk about any tillage or anything else, we want to get that soil testing done, we want to get any fertilizer applications done, get all those things out of the way, and then of course those soil amendments like lime or gypsum, get that done prior to any tillage you do. You may be already saying, whoa, whoa, you keep talking about tillage, I'm in no-till, I don't want to do tillage, or I'm in strip-till, so I really can't manage compaction that way. That may be the case, and you may be in some highly erodible ground where you need to get to a minimum till or no-till type situation. So there are solutions even in no-till. As Brian mentioned, getting that nutrient balance right is one of those things. The other thing could be cover crops. Now on our farm this year, we don't have a huge amount of acres of cover crops, I'll be real upfront about that, but where we have wheat, we really like to put cover crops out following wheat harvest. So that's one thing if I was going to be in strict no-till I would really look hard at putting cover crops out in those fields. With the right cover crop mix 
you can certainly address compaction issues just by growing another crop. Okay, let's talk about that tillage side of things. Now, a lot of people will go out there with a ripper and they'll use a C shank that basically rolls subsoil up into topsoil sometimes. And then the other thing is they'll use a wide shank at the base. What we're typically talking about, what we prefer is a narrow point and more of a straight shank. So we're not turning that soil. We're really not real big on that. What we are big on is lifting the soil a little bit and also cutting slices through the soil so our roots can get down deeper. We used to call this zone building. Basically it's just deep ripping with a straight shank, narrow point, so we're not turning everything, we're not busting everything up, we're just lifting, setting it back down, but in the meantime every 30 inches we have cut slices out there to not only get below our first hard pan, our, our man-made hard pan, but also our natural compaction layer that's typically down in that 14 to 18 inch range. So it's important before you even start this tillage or any kind of tillage in the fall to understand where is my compaction problem at. You can do that with a penetrometer, you could do that with a spade, however you figure it out yourself, find out where your compaction layers are at. If you find one at six inches, another at 12 inches, you gotta make sure you're getting just below that 12 inch depth so you're running Correctly. What we very often find is people are just going out there ripping or you know even if they're using the right tool they're just rolling. Oh I gotta go. I gotta get acres done. Well your tractor's going to use a lot more fuel and it's going to go a little slower. When you go at the right depth, you got to find out the right depth because it doesn't do you a whole lot of good to run just above your compaction layer. You've got to get just below it. The other thing I think about quite often when we talk about deep ripping versus just, hey, let's run a straight shank is in the spring and losing your base. In other words, we've had a lot of guys over the years that have ripped everything up and then in the spring they get stuck because there's no base there in the ground. When you're doing this straight shank method about every 30 inches in your soil in between if you drive in between you're going to find that's still relatively firm not super hard because the whole soil was probably lifted up a little bit but at least it's firm so you can get there in the spring i, I really like how we started this talk about compaction though everybody immediately when you think compaction it's either cover crops or deep tillage we started with a whole different approach and you should too on your farm look at the nutrient levels in your soil in many yep. cases that's where the problem begins that because we have a nutrient imbalance because we have too much magnesium and not enough calcium, that's one example, we end up with this propensity of the soil to compact, to get tight, to get sticky, uh, and to stay wet in the spring. Solving that problem is the first thing. Then you can start looking at the tillage or cover crop option. Hey, one last thing before we go. I just want to mention this because in some areas we are right in the middle of harvest. Drive in the same path all the way along. They say that most of the compaction occurs in that first pass. 70% of the compaction occurs in the very first pass. Just stay in that, that controlled track. Make your traffic controlled in the field. Try to drive on the same strips. Then you only have a few spots that are bad, not random spots all around the field. It'll make it much better. You can really see this now with some of these newer planting maps. Like on our farm, we've got precision planting. You can see it exactly as we're going across the field with the planter where we have to have more down pressure. You can see a track from the previous fall. If somebody decided, oh, I'm just going to randomly run across the field, we don't want that control your traffic, that'll really help you. Well, compaction is certainly a big issue on farms across the country. So is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops, we applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. 
for lower cost, higher production. Mandeco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco Agri dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit etsprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. One of the most important nutrients in your crop is something you might not think a lot about, it's copper. All right, so with copper, there's a couple different ways that you can look at it. One is you can look at your soil test, and we're gonna talk about soil test levels. That's important to get to a certain point. The second part, though, is plant tissue analysis. With many of the micronutrients, we need such small quantities that you may say, okay, well, I'm in the right range on my soil test, how come my plant is having problems? We need to look at plant tissue analysis throughout the growing season to see if we're actually getting those micros into our plant as well. The soil test level we're looking for in a Midwest Labs test is 1.4 to 2.0 parts per million. 1.4 to 2.0, that's really what we're shooting for. Then, when you look at what we're talking about with plant tissue analysis, we might have tie-up because of other nutrients, things like that. So get your test into the 1.4 to 2.0 range for corn, soybeans, or wheat first then be looking at plant tissue analysis and let's address things beyond that. Well, when you look at soil test levels, we're talking about parts per million. Now in six inches of soil, we're representing about two million pounds of soil. So if you say 1.4 parts per million is what I need, that's 2.8 pounds per acre. That's it, it's not very much. And when Brian talks about you could get out of balance real easy, I look at this 2.8 pounds and say, oh, come on, 2.8. Maybe I'll put four out there and now I'll be good for a couple of years so I don't have to go out and spread this copper every year. Wow, okay, now you're in big trouble because you way overdid it and you could tie something else up. The same could be true if you said, you know what, I'm gonna go out and put on a whole bunch of zinc. I'm tired of running short of zinc in my corn. Uh, I, I've heard that from many farmers. I'm tired of running short of zinc. So you way over apply zinc. Now, even if you had the right amount of copper to begin with, because your zinc is so high, you could be tying up the copper. So you have to look at the balance. The best way to do that is plant tissue analysis. All right, so don't get overly confused by this. Again, 1.4 to 2.0 parts per million on copper. The cheapest way is typically copper sulfate. Here's my biggest piece of advice for you. If you're gonna go straight copper sulfate, which we will commonly do in a tank of water only, then we'll go spray that out. Make sure you clean the tank out. Now, whether you blend it with other stuff or not, make sure you clean that spray tank out because copper sulfate can cause problems in your tank if you leave it sit even overnight. So spray it out, clean it out. If you want to look for other forms of copper for either using around planting time, foliar feeding, whatever, there are many different forms of copper you can get. It's just typically copper sulfate is the cheapest. So if you need lots, that's a lot of times the way to go. All right, when we talk about copper, certainly it makes a big difference in your crop. But I'm going to talk about an operation that has livestock and they have crops. So it's a dairy farm. They're feeding these cattle the silage that they're growing on their farm, which is a pretty normal deal, right? But the silage was dramatically short in copper from that field. They feed that grain and that silage to the cattle. Then they put the manure back on the field. And they, they're just short in the whole system in copper. They ended up having issues with calving. And it was a big problem for the livestock part of their farm that they were looking at with veterinarians. Hey, what's going on here? And they figured out, you know what? We're dramatically short in copper. Well, where are you getting the feed from? 
while we're raising the feed ourselves. Then we look at the soil test in the field. We're dramatically short in copper. Big surprise. It's one of those things where, you know what? We need to solve both of those problems to improve copper levels, to improve crop production, and improve the health of their livestock. Copper is tremendously important in crops in terms of disease tolerance. It's kind of known as the disease nutrient. The other thing on our own farms, we started getting a lot higher yield with soybeans, which was great, and bigger seed. But the problem we ran into is the seed was literally busting out of the seed coat. Well, what we found out is copper was the solution there as well. So taking a look at copper in your operation is incredibly important and I realize it's not an NPK, it's not this big deal, you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars, but just focus on the little things and pretty soon you're going to find everything starts to work better. Well, one thing you definitely want to work well on your farm is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. is burr cucumber. And thankfully we don't have it on our farm yet, but it's one of the worst weeds across the country. It's rated as one of the top 10 worst weeds. Now, when you think about it, what makes it such a challenge? Well, it's a vine. And anytime you have a vine, it's really tough to get a contact herbicide to hit every growing point. And you're gonna get part of the plant, but not all of the plant, and that's a challenge. The other thing with burr cucumber is it often comes up late in the season. So many times we'll see weed control looks great in the field, and all of a sudden we catch some more rains in August, which are a nice thing in crops like soybeans, but all of a sudden we get more burr cucumber coming back. So what can we do to get residual control and hold it throughout the season? Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up residual because with those vines, a lot of times Roundup just isn't the best. Some of the contact killers, because you have to have this great coverage, they aren't the best. So we do want these residual products out there. Now in corn, we would say Balance Flex is probably the best thing you can use, although Verdict with that Sharpen in there is not too bad. In soybeans, we're going to really want to see a Metribuzin out there, the old Sencor. So our favorite choice would be Authority MTZ. And then when we talk about wheat and a residual herbicide, we'd like to use pre-emerge Sharpen. If you do those things, you start with the good residual, then your post-emerge product doesn't have to do so much work. All right, well, post-emerge in wheat, I like Husky. Addition Broad Spec has been a nice tank mix partner in many of the different combinations that get used. In soybeans, Cadet and Cobra, those kind of burners get used a lot. I also like the STS chemistry. If you've got an STS tolerant variety, I like things like Classic and Synchrony as well. First rate does have some activity too. In corn, well, you've got a lot of choices there, but I think the ones with the longer residual, something like an Impact, Laudus, Callisto, with some Atrazine, if you can, is a great way to go. And then, of course, if you've got Liberty Link crops, you can use Liberty. As Brian mentioned, Roundup, maybe this isn't the best weed for Roundup. Well, burr cucumber shouldn't be that difficult a weed to control because it's just an annual, it's a summer annual. But like Darren said, when it does come up later in the season, when you can't get that good spray coverage on it, and especially if you don't use a good residual program. Yeah, it can be a really difficult one and it does seem to be spreading across the country. Well, that's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Precision in grain moisture management can save you thousands in spoilage and elevator docks. The AgriDry Bullseye Controller monitors temperature and grain moisture and is available for all dryer makes and models. Plus, our AD Link feature gives you 24 7 remote monitoring and allows you to control your dryer wherever you are. Call us today for more information. Dry Load Store, 1 855 AgriDry. When we use agriculture liquid, uh, we'll usually end up with 2.7 to 3 pounds a game per animal a day. We had a 100 head out on a pasture this last fall that gained at 2.7. You know, they made about 450 bucks 
We usually get about a 10 day start. It's ready 10 days early. And we're grazing and they're waiting and we're gaining. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product. Application at the time of planting can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the Changing Times. Are you wasting money applying the wrong fertilizers on your farm? Here are three easy steps to finding out. First, download the free Ag PhD soil test app. Next, pull your own samples. You can probably sample a thousand acres a day using five acre grids. Finally, submit the samples and get both Ag PhD and Midwest Labs recommendations. You can also quickly and easily build your own variable rate application maps and controller files. Go to agphdsoiltest.com to learn more. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leader's IntelliSlope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. strip tilling for a number of years and work with a large number of other strip tillers across the country. I'll share a piece of advice that's held true for nearly all in today's Iron Talk. If you're trying to get strip tilling done yet this fall, the weather and soil conditions are variable across the country. Now, you're likely running out of time depending on where you're at, too. The rule of thumb for today's Iron Talk is to make your strip till pass the last trip across the field in the fall. Here are the big issues that have been coming up. Tough stalks. First of all, following corn, dealing with those big, long stalks that are often holding moisture can be a real challenge. Now, if you do need some other form of tillage to help with the stalks, like vertical tillage with a coulter cart, for example, do that first. We ran into this challenge a couple years back, and running another pass after strip till was very detrimental to the seed beds that we had built for next year. When it comes to nutrient applications, if you have nutrients or soil amendments that need to be applied, but you're ready to go on the field with strip till, the best choice is still to wait until after those nutrients are applied to do the strip tillage. We had this situation come up on our farm where we needed to apply some zinc sulfate on a prescription basis to certain zones within a field. We ended up strip tilling at first because the snow and cold weather was imminent, and rather than messing up our berms, we waited until spring and found weather where the ground was firm in the morning but thawing in the afternoon to get the work done. Now, it's definitely best to let strip till be the last pass you make through the field in the fall, but things aren't always ideal, even or especially on our farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. 
Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the quick till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM Channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show, where we'll have another Weed of the Week Farm Basics Iron Talk and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Subsurface drainage tile is used around your home and in farmers' fields to remove excess water safely. To learn more about clean water leaving farm fields, visit rnmf.org.